Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at the greatest common factor. And so I'm looking at page 5 of your hand up, um, handbook. So this is page 5 from your handbook. Greatest common factor, this is a maze, we're going to complete this maze. Okay, so um, it says to choose the correct greatest common factor for each pair of expressions to find your way to the finish line. So in, in the start box, there's two terms here that were given to expressions and we're trying to find the GCF is the abbreviation for this or greatest common factor so I'm going to write these down and then we'll, we'll start to work this out so my two expressions right now are 14 x squared y to the sixth and 49 x to the sixth y cubed okay so let's focus on this and then we'll come back to the maze so the question is about, well, what do these have in common? Greatest means largest. Common means what do they share? And factor means what to, what's multiplied to create these. So greatest common factor. What's the biggest thing they have, they share that multiplies to make these? So I always start with the numbers. So in terms of 49 and 14, think about what numbers go into those. And you can use a multiplication table if you'd like, if that helps. Feel free to have that handy when we're working on things like this. But 14 and 49, if you think about it, 14 is 7 times 2, okay? And 49 is 7 times 7. And so they do both share a 7. So this one hopefully was um, not too bad to figure out. Sometimes we have to break down the numbers quite a bit to figure this out. But so far they share a 7. Let's move on to the x's. The first expression has a total of two x's. If you break that apart, that's x times x. The second expression has a total of six x's. And it gets a little tedious to write this out when the numbers become large for exponents, but we'll do this for this one. Six x's. So the question is, well, how many x's do they have in common? The greatest amount, the greatest amount that they have in common is two of them. This this uh, factor from up here has two x's, and over here we have at least two. So in common, they have two x's or x squared. All right, and then let's move on to the y's. So the first expression has six y's, and you don't have to write this out every time. I'm just doing it for this first example. The second expression has three y's, and so again, greatest common factor when it comes to y's, the greatest amount of y's they have in common is 3. This expression had 3 y's, and this expression has at least 3 y's. So putting this all together, the greatest common factor of these two expressions is 7 x squared times y cubed, or y to the third. And so we're going to factor that out. Oh, actually, we're not going to factor that out yet. Just yet. yeah, we're just identifying this. So let me keep this here, and then show you back on our maze. So in the maze, we were starting here, and we're looking for. Let me move this a little bit. We're looking for this greatest common factor, and we have three options coming out of box one: eight a b to the fourth b uh, eight. A to the fourth B. See, that doesn't even make sense. There's no A, Bs, and Cs here. This has Xs and Ys in it, but it has a 14, and we figured out that 14 actually doesn't go into 49, only 7 did. And so it has to be this one. So there it is. So you'll start to draw across here. And so you'll say from box 1, I'll go through this common factor, and then I may make my way into box 2, and I repeat this process, and I'm trying to find my way down this maze. Okay, so let's do the next one. I, I won't go through all of them. I'm going to pause it and let you figure out the rest, but we'll do some of them together. Let's find the next one. So let me just write this down. We have 49, oh, sorry, 45 w to the ninth x to the fourth times y. And my next expression was 90 w x y. Okay, let's move this out of the way. And so that was the first problem up here. Starting with the coefficients, 45 and 90. So if you don't know what the greatest common factor of the coefficients is, then you would break the numbers down. And I'm going to do it this way just in case you don't see it. 
but um, 45 actually goes into 90. So that's gonna be our greatest common factor for the coefficient. But let's say I didn't know that. So I'm gonna start with 45 and I'm gonna use a factor tree to break it down. So if you have a um, multiplication table handy and you, you're not familiar how to break this down, you can use that table. But one way to break down 45 is nine times five. Okay, and then five is prime. You can't break it down anymore, but nine is not. Nine can be broken down as three times three. All right, now that's as far as I can go to break down 45. All these numbers are prime. So then 90, let's do the same thing. 90, the best way I'm gonna, I can just easily see to break down 90 is nine times 10, even though there's other ways to break down 90. And then nine we know is three times three. And then 10 is five times two. And so I look at the base of all of my branches here for my factor tree, and this 45, this coefficient here, has a three in it, and 90 has a three in it. So they share that, they have that in common. 45 has another three in it, but so does 90. And then 45 has a five in it, and so does 90. And so the GCF in terms of the numbers, just in terms of 45 and 90, I'll write it like this, GCF of 45 and 90 is three times three times five, which is nine times five, which is 45. Okay, and I had mentioned that earlier. So if you saw it, if you know that 45 times two is 90, you could have skipped all this and just said 45 goes into both of these numbers. 45 goes into itself as well as 90. Let's go forward and look at the w's and the x's and the y's. So over here we have w to the nine. Over here we have w to the first power. So what do they have in common? Well, this one's only one w. The next one has a total of nine w's being multiplied. I'll write this out as fast as I can. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, a lot of w's here. And so what they have in common they both have at least one W. This one has one, but this one has nine. But they have at least one W in common. And so let's do the next two parts by just looking. This um, expression had one X, this had four. So in common, they have at least one X in common. This expression had one Y, this had one Y also, so they have one Y in common. Okay, and so our GCF in this case between these two expressions is 45, a single w, times x, times single y. Okay, and so that's our GCF for those two expressions. So 45w, x, y, let's look at our options here. 45, no, this is our only option. So going through our maze to right here. And we keep breaking that down and then we figure out how we're gonna to get to the finish line. Okay, so uh, let me do this one more with you, this one, this one in the corner here, and then I'll have you pause it and try to complete this maze, and then I'll show you the answer after you're done. So the next one we have, let's write this down, and then I'll move this out of the way. 144a cubed b to the ninth c, and then 112ab c to the sixth. Okay, um, now the, the way you say it, if it's to the third power, we say cubed, or you can say the third power. That one just has a special way to say it. So let's start with the numbers. Off the top of my head, I don't know what 144 and 112 have in common as far as the biggest um, factor that they share. So I'm going to go ahead and break them down using my factor tree. And we'll figure that out from here. So if you know some things about these numbers you can start there. I do know that 144 is 12 times 12, so I'll start there. And then 12 is three times four. And then four is two times two. So I'll do that again for this 12, three times four, and then two times two. Okay, so I prime factored 144. 112, I'm not as familiar with this number, but I do know something about it. I do know it's even. So if I don't know what goes into this number, but I see that it's even, I know that two goes into this number. So I can start there. So I have to just say, well, what is um, 112 divided by two? And so let's say I didn't know this one either. I would just check this out on the side of my paper. I would say, okay, 
I don't know, I know it's even, 2 goes into it, let's divide and figure this out. 2 goes into 11 5 times, if we subtract we get 1, bring down the 2, 2 goes into 12 6 times, okay, so it's 2 times 56. And then I keep going, okay, do I know anything about 56? And this one you might know, it's 7 times 8, and then 7 is prime, so break down 8, 8 is 4 times 2, and then 4 is 2 times 2. Alright, so let's compare. Um, there's no 3's in 112, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to stay organized, I'm going to cross off the 3's, because there's no 3's over here. There is a 2 here, 1, 2 in 144, and another 2 in 112. I have another 2 that makes up 144, and another 2 that makes up 112, a third 2 in both of these numbers, and a fourth 2 in both of these numbers. Okay, and then that's all my factors from 144. There's no 7 over here, so that one's also, we're not going to use that either. So my GCF for the two numbers, 144 and 112, is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16. Now, if you knew that 16 goes into 144 and 112, you could have skipped all this, but this is in case you didn't realize what 144 and 112 share. And then let's look at the A's. As far as A's go, this term has three A's, this one has one. So in common, they share one A, okay? So at least one. This one only has one, so it can't share more than it has. So it has one A here and at least one here, so they share an A. B's, this expression has one B, this has nine, but they share at least one. They have one in common. And then C, this expression has six, but this one only has one, so they only have at least one in common. Okay, they have exactly one in common. And that is our GCF. So let's go back to our maze here. And looking down, this one. So from here, we're going to work our way down. And we end up in this box, and we either have 3z to the ninth as a common factor, or 9xz as a common factor, and then you'll work this out. Okay, so I'm going to pause this, and then you, you take the time and work this out, and then I'll show you where what the path is for the answer. Okay, here it is. So I should have probably avoided scribbling on top of the um, expressions initially. I did avoid it later. But we figured out where to go from here and our path with our greatest common factors ends up working its way down to the finish line. Okay, so hopefully you got that right. If you didn't, check your work and see if you could figure out where you might have made a mistake. And that's it for this one.